Good morning, everybody. Kindly just give me a thumbs up in the chat if you can see and hear me clearly. Ooh, I see the thumbs up right there. Okay, fantastic. Hello, everybody. Good morning and welcome to our first ever Pan-African Tech Foundation, Southern Africa Emerging Technologies Bootcamp. My name is Lorraine Davis and I am the Africa Hubs Manager as well as the Programs Coordinator for PATF. And we are super excited to have you here with us today. Um, this is of course our first bootcamp ever. We are um, very excited to have you all, very excited to share what it is that we have for you here today. So without any further ado, I am going to be sharing my screen now where I will be taking you through just a brief presentation on who we are, what we are doing, and where we are going. I welcome you all who are joining. Um, I'm just gonna get started so that we don't uh, go over time because there's quite a lot, quite a bit happening on our agenda today. And so we just want to, you know, keep it Swiss and keep the time for today. So thank you so, so much. Okay, so um, thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Veronica, as well, for confirming. So as shared today, we are here for our Southern Africa Emerging Technologies Bootcamp, and we are hosting this first ever PATF Bootcamp under the theme, Leave No African Behind. So you will hear just from the conversations that we are having today with our panelists, as well as what our trainers and speakers are sharing on today, that indeed we have no plans of leaving any African behind. So just to help us all have the best experience of air meet in terms of how it goes, at the bottom of your screen, you have an option to switch to um, a low definition mode. This will just make sure that if your connection gets a bit unstable, you're not necessarily disconnected because you are using a little less bandwidth. And um, to the right hand side, you have a menu bar there where there's an option for you to chat, to send a chat to everybody here. And I will be able to see it. My teammates and I will also be able to see it and then respond back to you. You also have an option to raise your hand. And um, depending on whether we are taking questions at that moment, then we will, in I will rather be inviting you onto the stage to join me. So those are just um, the quick to like what you quickly just need to know about Amy so that you can have the best experience possible. And of course, um, for you to be able to, of course, join me on the stage to come and ask a question when you raise your hand, etc. you need to be using your um, computer just so that you have the full functionality of the Air Meet platform. So without any further ado, let me just get into who or what we do as the Pan-African Tech Foundation. So on our agenda today, we are going to be just having a quick welcome remark from Crystal Mushonga, who is um, the Southern Africa hub lead. And then we will get into the introduction on blockchain and the introduction um, to artificial intelligence. These will be done by Larry Mwansa, as well as Claire Matuka, one after the other in that particular order. And then later on, we will be hearing from Ibrahim Bashir, as well as the Satoshi uh, center represented by Alakanani and Kogetso. And we will also once again hear from Crystal. So this section of our program will be where we are essentially learning about entrepreneurship, learning about entrepreneurship in Africa, as well as how to become a techpreneur without technical skills. And then later on in the day, in the afternoon, now we will be having our panel discussions. Our first panel will be on traversing the rural urban divide, and then that will be followed followed by a panel discussion on solutions that scale as we just take a deeper dive into how to scale your solutions in Africa. Thereafter, we will be hearing once again from our Southern Africa Hub Lead Crystal on how um, the plan or rather the vision that the Southern Africa Hub has in launching the Traveling Tech School project. And then we will be joined by Gilbert Buhari, who is representing 
um, the Pan-African Heritage Museum, where we are just going to be learning a bit about the engagement with arts and culture and heritage as Africans. And then in the end, we will be having closing remarks by Elaine Bannerman, who you will meet very shortly. Who are we as a PATF? So essentially at the heart of what we do, we are an independent not-for-profit um, organization and we have essentially been established in order to provide education and legal regulatory as well as technical support in the establishment and implementation of emerging technologies. Therefore, we are of course learning today about blockchain as well as artificial intelligence. And how exactly do we aim to do that? We, um, our mission essentially is to transform Africa through technology. And in the words of our founder, Elaine Bannerman, she says that um, the vision is to advocate for Africans to, to come to the table rather, to build solidarity on global developments in technology as Africans with an agenda for Africa. Essentially, Africa solving its own problems. And without any further ado, I would just like to introduce you to Elaine Bannerman. She is a lawyer, an entrepreneur, a Pan-Africanist, of course, and uh, she is building the Pan-African FinTech and a blockchain ecosystem. Um, Elaine, I would like to just have you on the stage for just a few minutes as we just hear from you um, just a bit about your vision for the foundation and where we are going. So I'm just inviting you to join me onto the stage now, Elaine, and then we can quickly get into it. Good morning, Elaine. How are you? Good morning, Lorraine. It's good to be here. It's good to see you. It's good to see everyone. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for being a part of this wonderful um, experience that we're all having here. As Lorraine has told you, we are Pan-African Tech Foundation, shortened for PUTEF, and our mission is to ensure that we can train the whole continent. It's an ambitious mission, but to train everyone possible, we can, possible as we can on the continent of Africa. And for that reason, we have set up hubs in all the five sub-regions, so we have a hub in Morocco for North Africa, a hub in Nigeria for West Africa, a hub in Tanzania for East Africa. Our Southern Africa hub is in Zimbabwe. Our Central Africa hub is in Rwanda and uh, DRC. So this is our mission. Our mission is to go ahead, spread the news, tell everybody about blockchain and artificial intelligence and other emerging technologies simply because we don't want Africans to be left behind in this amazing global technological revolution which is you all probably know as the fourth, in, fourth industrial revolution. Um, I think that um, a lot of you here have your own organizations and we have quite a number of partners who we see are also on this same mission. It's exciting for us to come together to do this for Africa as Africans. And so let's do this. Um, this event today is our first event and we will be having many more events. We're not just having this one event in Southern Africa and then that's it. What we're hoping is that as you listen in to this event, as you learn from this event, you come back to us and you say to us, we want more. And then we will come and give you more. Even if you don't ask us for more, we will still come and give you more. So again, I just want to extend my warm, warm thanks to all of you for joining us. And Lorraine, thank you very much again. Thank you, Elaine. We will hear from Elaine later today as she wraps up our session today. And, um, Okay, all right. To everybody who has just recently joined, welcome to our boot camp. Um, just so that you don't get disconnected, you have an option to switch to a low definition mode. You will have this at the bottom of your screen. There's a menu bar there. This will just help you use a little less bandwidth and have a better air meet experience. All right, so thank you, Elaine. 
And um, as she has already shared, we have our network here. Essentially, we have five hubs across sub across um, Africa, rather. We have our North Africa hub as shared, Central Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, as well as West Africa. And in addition to um, all the hubs that we have, we also have country representatives. These are essentially individuals, men and women, who have said, hey, this is an amazing vision that you have, and we would actually love to be proactively involved in it and helping you achieve this vision. So if you're passionate about emerging technologies, passionate about young people, passionate about um, entrepreneurship as well, get in touch. We would love to have you be part of our network, for example, as a country representative, because our aim is indeed to do a lot more training, not only um, at, at a sub-regional level, but also at a country level. I would also like to introduce to you today, Crystal Mushonga, who is the PATF Southern Africa Hub leader. Um, and she will be sharing with us just a little later on a bit more about the vision that she has for the Southern Africa Hub, as well as taking us through how to become a techpreneur without technical skills. So I'll leave her um, to join us only a little bit later when uh, she will be taking us through the content that she has prepared for us. And then we have amazing individuals, men and women from all across Africa that have come on board to join us. This is everybody from our speakers, our trainers today, who you will meet shortly, as well as our panelists for the panels that we are having later in the afternoon today. I just want to say that this is an amazing um, moment for us because we really want to be Pan-African or rather we are Pan-African. And so to see individuals from Cameroon and Luanda, Angola and Botswana, where I am from, um, is just really fantastic. So to all our speakers and trainers, we are so grateful and so thankful that you are supporting us today. And then we have our partners. So these are organizations that have uh, come on board and say, hey, let us help you spread the word about this vision that you have. And so to all of our partners today, um, some representatives you will meet as we go along. Um, and I would just like to also say thank you to every single one of you. Then, of course, in true PATF style, our mission is, of course, training and um, empowering young people with, with the skills needed rather to solve the problems that we are facing in Africa. We have the opportunity, um, courtesy of the University of Nicosia, which is in the UK. They are offering a free 12-week course on a blockchain. A bit more information about this will be shared with you all over email. So if you are interested in learning about blockchain, for free, of course, <laughs> at a reputable um, institute. Get in touch with me, let me know ASAP, and I will share the full details with you. Please also just look out for all of this information on our social media platforms, where we will, of course, be sharing with you how you can register and take um, advantage of these great um, of these great courses. And then, of course, as shared by Elaine, we are having um, our events in the other sub-regions that we have. So firstly, coming up right after this one will be our um, event in North Africa on May 30th, as well as our event in East Africa that will be on June 25th. So from today, you are welcome to be part of any other PATF events because essentially our mission is to train everybody. With that being said, um, this is now the part where we get into our training. I am going to be introducing to you all our first trainer of the day. Let me be uh, inviting onto the stage now, Larry Mwansa. Good morning, Larry. How are you? I'm all right, uh, Lorraine. How are you? I'm fantastic, super excited. Mm -hmm. Before I leave you onto the stage, um, you know, everybody read your bio. Um, because we shared it on social media and we also have it here on the event page. But just what is it about you that you think is interesting for us to know that you, you don't have in your bio, just so that we get to know you on a bit more of a personal level? All right. 
Fantastic. Um, just a short part of my journey in um, uh, the new technologies blockchain. Uh, it, it started in 2018. So um, I was writing for a friend of mine because some of the stuff that I do is freelance writing at that time, right? So uh, somebody wanted a writer. So I said, well, okay, cool. I can write for this man. So when I got to that man, um, he told me that he wanted me to write on blockchain technology. And uh, being a journalist, I was like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll take it up. It's a challenge. As yeah. always, you know, you, we do our research. That's what matters. So when I got into the blockchain technology and started writing about it, you know, it just opened me to a new world. And uh, yeah. it was quite interesting. It was quite interesting. And I was like, wow, okay. I'm really like interested, you know, I want to be a part of this. And, you know, um, since uh, these are new economies, as I begin to understand that these are new economies, right? And I'm like, you know what? It's important to be part of the new economies as the world is changing, you know. We are sitting at yeah. a vantage point currently, you know, where there is such kind of openness for new things, you know, new businesses, as I said, you know, new economies, yeah. So that's the way I jumped into the uh, blockchain space. And uh, yeah. whilst I was writing, uh, I got introduced to um, the colleagues that I am actually with currently in the United Africa Blockchain Association. And uh, here we are, right? Uh, in UEBA, we are more interested in um, training, you know, getting the message out there in Africa, training uh, organizations, training individuals, so that they can uh, get to understand the uh, technology itself. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little about me, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Right. I'm going to leave you to it now. I'm going to give it all over to you. Um, to everybody, you are welcome to ask questions in the chat. Um, and Larry will be taking the questions. Um, Larry, I will just be the one checking for you the questions in the chat. And then now right. and then just let you know that we mm -hmm. have a question based on what you shared. All right. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Um, all right. Hello, everybody. I hope you are super psyched. Um, I, I, I want you to um, slightly be patient and um, just um, take it all in. Um, out of my own experience, uh, blockchain technology is something new and uh, in the beginning, it can be slightly difficult to understand. So, but um, what I will do, I'll introduce you to a certain approach uh, that I think works well. And I'm happy because, well, uh, in essence, this bootcamp is about um, entrepreneurs and business. And uh, that just fits in well, right? Um, blockchain technology, in essence, uh, covers the infrastructure. Uh, upon which a good number of applications are built, of which um, the most um, prominent one is cryptocurrencies, right? So uh, today we'll be looking at the actual technology upon which, you know, things uh, such as cryptocurrencies are created. Cryptocurrencies is not the only application that is uh, uh, using the blockchain. Um, uh, uh, ecosystems, or should I say the platform or um, uh, infrastructure, there are other applications that have come as time has gone on. Yeah. So um, as you start the bootcamp and as you get introduced to blockchain technology, this is the, um, this is the approach I want you to have, right? I want you to look at the technology in two aspects. There is the technological side of the chain, and there's also the business side of the chain. Because usually when people are getting introduced to the blockchain technology, you know, um, everything gets muddled into one or the other thing. I think I would like to look at it from what can you get out of it? Then we can get into the technological aspect of it so that you can see the technical, um, you know, meats and bones of the 
technology itself. So um, as a business or as a person who is interested in, uh, let's say, getting into blockchain or, use, or utilizing blockchain for businesses, you need to approach it in this way, technological side and the business side of um, blockchain. What do I mean? They are, um, all right. They are, um, they are, um, you, you can build businesses using the technology itself. So let's say, well, you are interested in starting coins, right? You are interested in starting tokens, right? You can dive right into the, into the tech itself, then develop something for yourself. And, you know, you market it out there, whatever you are doing, whatever problem that you, you might want to solve. Whether, you know, you want to use coins as a payment system, you want to use, you know, tokens, you know, let's say to, um, to um, propel, you know, to fuel something else, right? So you can use it that way, right? So um, you can say, well, okay, maybe I, I want to be a developer and, um, you know, I want to work on the, on the chain. You can find, um, you know, you can set up business, you know, developing business, helping other businesses build apps on the chain. So those are the kinds of approaches you can look, you know, just a bit that I can share with you when it comes to the, you know, technological side of the chain as business. And um, I, I think the business side of the chain um, deals mostly with um, either things that are off chain, if I can say that, you know, what do I mean when I say off chain? Um, you know, um, I'm sure a good number of you know about crypto exchanges, right? Yeah, crypto exchanges, they'll be using the blockchain to do business. They'll set up business, they'll connect to the blockchain, right? People are buying crypto through them and, and all that, you know? So there are all sorts of businesses, right, that are using the either the blockchain, right, to do their businesses. So those are like off-chain or, uh, I mean, you know, uh, business side of a chain of chain businesses that are, are, are really, you know, uh, taking advantage, you know, and, um, you know, applying their trade that way. So, you know, you, you can look at that, that, that way, you know, can I set up something that, um, you know, utilizes uh, the products that the blockchain is producing, right? So um, there's also another side of business, which is off chain, you know, you can run businesses that can give services to businesses that are already involved, you know, either on the technological side or the, you know, or the off-chain business side of, uh, of the chain. So, yeah, those are the kinds of approaches that I would like you to, um, you, know, you know, consider as you are checking out the tech itself. All right, um, let's dive into... Uh, what the tech uh, is all about, right? So uh, we'll start from the first um, application of the blockchain that was ever uh, produced, right? And uh, it came out of the guys that built Bitcoin. So um, Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, the man or a group of people, that brought out the first used case for blockchain technology, you know, he made a proposition. He made a proposition for a trustless payment system. He was like, you know what, we, we need here, we are going to solve this problem. Um, the problem that we want to solve is to create a trustless decentralized payment system. So, um, Let's go together in this journey and uh, read um, the proposition that Nakamoto, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto uh, gave in the Bitcoin uh, white paper. I'm just going to read uh, a bit of that excerpt as we begin to look at uh, the tech itself. Commerce on the internet has come to rely almost exclusively on financial institutions serving as trusted third parties to process electronic payments. 
while the system works well enough for most transactions, it still suffers from the inherent weaknesses of the trust-based model. Completely non-reversible um, transactions are not really possible since financial institutions cannot avoid mediating disputes. The cost of mediation increases transaction costs, limits the minimum practical transaction size and cuts off the possibility for small casual um, transactions. And there is a broader cost in the loss of ability to make non-reversible payments for non-reversible services. With the possibility of reversal, the need for trust spreads. Merchants must be wary of their customers hustling them for more information than they would otherwise need. A certain percentage of fraud is accepted as unavoidable. These costs and payment uncertainties can be avoided in person by using uh, physical currency, but no mechanism exists to make payments over a communication channels without a trusted party. What is needed is an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof in instead of trust, allowing any two willing parties to transact directly with each other without the need for a trusted third party. Transactions that are computer, co computer, uh, compute <laughs> sorry, transactions that are computable, computably in uh, inaccurate in in um, sorry, let me read that again. Uh, transactions that are computer nation computer. <laughs> uh, my tongue is escaping me. Transactions that cannot be you know that can not be computed. Um, that cannot use um, cryptography, computed using cryptography, um, and cannot be reversed that way, won't be susceptible to fraud. And um, an, extra, an extra system can be implemented so that buyers are protected. In this paper, we propose a solution to the double spending problem by using a peer-to-peer -peer distributed timestamp server to generate proof of the chronological order of transaction. This system is secure as long as honest nodes collectively control more computing power. All right, I know that is a lot to take in, but that is what uh, the guys at Bitcoin proposed, to be able to create a trustless system that is decentralized. It doesn't need any um, any third party to stand in for, for trust. So uh, what do they use for trust to, to, to solve trust, to make it trustless? They use cryptography. And cryptography is the one that is able to uh, validate uh, the system. So um, let's get onto it. So whichever system that um, blockchain technology is based on is based on this same framework, the framework of uh, a decentralized system that uses cryptography instead of a third party to be able to validate any document. So in this case, it was uh, firstly applied with money. So the issue here was, well, could we be able to remove a third party and could we be able to make money that can work digitally on the internet? without having to, um, to, 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 to resort back to the banks and all that. Because when you look at the money that we use, right, it, you need the banks. You need somebody to be able to say, well, yes, Larry paid Lorraine this amount of money and all that. So to be able to create a system that didn't need that, you know, cryptography was, uh, was, uh, was, you know, was, was applied to, the, to, the, to, to a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, system. Right, so what do we mean when we say it's a peer-to-peer -peer system? 
a peer-to-peer -peer system um, is a type of uh, computer network, right? And this is one thing that we need to understand. A blockchain exists on a computer network, right? So the difference between other networks with a peer-to-peer -peer network is that a peer-to-peer -peer network, it doesn't have a centralized um, kind of a system. A peer-to-peer -peer network is presented by a number of servers that are connected or having the same type of information. So you do not necessarily need to uh, hook up to, you know, like one main server, a client server to be able to get information. All right. Um, let's move further. We've got quite some much to handle. Right. So, um, even as we go on, uh, you can send some of your questions in the chat so that I should be able to check out um, or, or whatever you might need uh, from me as we are going on, you know, um, stage by stage. So as we are going on stage by stage, we are going to look at the blockchain itself and um, um, the best approach that we're going to um, get into is to be able to show you um, how each blockchain ecosystem works. So the best way to understand the blockchain itself will be able to understand it from, you know, like any ecosystem of a blockchain, you know, introduce you, you know, like uh, how does, um, what does a, a blockchain like, um, like Ethereum, you know, do? What does a blockchain like a Bitcoin do, you know? So uh, at this time, uh, a blockchain is best handled that way so that you understand first and foremost, what are the, components that go into it and that way it will give you a great understanding of what what blockchain does in, in essence basically you know the best way to handle a blockchain if you want to learn about a blockchain is to understand what kind of a problem it is sorting and that way you can also understand what are the components of the the, the actual blockchain but in essence we're going to tackle a blockchain based on the four components of a blockchain so that you get to understand what is in it and what it does and each component explains exactly what the blockchain is all about. So yeah, starters, what is a blockchain? A blockchain is a, is a cryptographic network, uh, a database maintained by uh, a distributed set of computers that do not share a trust relationship or common ownership. It is decentralized by virtue of what? the content of the blockchain's um, database or ledger is authenticated using cryptographic uh, techniques, preventing its contents from being added to, edited, or removed, except according to a protocol operated by the network as a whole. So the blockchain itself, the initial part of it is a ledger. So as we saw from the first used case, um, it was about uh, a payment system. So, well, how do we get the payment system to work? We want a payment system to have a ledger, a ledger that will be able to collect information on each transaction that takes place. And this ledger should not be able to be altered by anyone. And that way we sort out the problem of uh, double spending. So uh, create a system where we have a number of computers that come together, all having the same database, all agreeing on transactions that are made. And you know, having a whole line of a trusted uh, worth of the network and making it possible that this shouldn't be edited, you know, altered in any other way. So you, you begin to understand the applications that you can apply this to. You can apply this to, um, let's say, um, authenticating documents, authenticating documents like, let's say, education um, certificates and, and, and such kind of things, you know. So uh, documents are made, kept on the, on, the, on, on the system, or at least the record of it is kept on the system so that it is able to show that such and such a time, such, such and such a document was made. And that document cannot be, um, cannot be what you call it, uh, altered. Or you can apply it to things like, um, um, you know, real estate, uh, title deeds, you know, um, you know, you can prove ownership, you know, and that's the beauty of the, uh, of, uh, of the blockchain because, well, the cryptography itself is able to uh, timestamp, you know, a, a document, right? And attached to that document is information 
about your um about your title deed so it shows that well i have this title deed right and and that way we are able to maintain the integrity of information and all of us can have one uh, one uh, set of information, not um, three, four, five other sets of information, but one set of information that is shared across board. It is open for all to check out. Fantastic, yeah. So um, let's look at the four components of a blockchain system, right? To understand how blockchain technology, to understand blockchain technology as distinct from its applications, such as cryptocurrency, it is necessary to understand the four logical components of a blockchain ecosystem and what each component does. They are four components to any blockchain system, and they are as follows. The first one is a node application, a shared ledger or blockchain a consensus algorithm, and a virtual machine. Let's look at a node application. So let's say, let me give you an example. If I need to use um, uh, the block, uh, the Bitcoin ecosystem, for example, I want to get into the Bitcoin ecosystem, or I want to get into the Ethereum ecosystem, right? What will let me get into the Ethereum ecosystem is a software. This is the software or applica application specific to, um, to that uh, Ethereum uh, ecosystem, right? So for me to be able to participate on any blockchain, I need to get the software that is uh, related to that blockchain, right? So... I and my device, my device is, is a node. What is called a node is your, is any computer, uh, I mean, is any internet connected computer or device, right? So I will connect to Bitcoin using my device and using the software that is needed for me to interact with that ecosystem, right? So each 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 blockchain ecosystem has got its own software so i cannot say well i'll get into bitcoin using uh, ethereum software no so i need to get the actual software that is related to ethereum and that is what i'll use so the node application you begin to notice is that you know the node application will have bits of basically all the components of your blockchain, right? So first and foremost is the node application. And what is a node? A node is basically a computer that is connected to the network or a device such as your phone, any device that is allowed, um, that can surf the net, that is allowed to connect to that blockchain ecosystem. Right. Let's check out um, what the shared ledger will be in a blockchain ecosystem or the blockchain itself. So usually what we like to call the blockchain itself will be the shared ledger. Right. The blockchain or distributed ledger is a data structure managed inside the node application. Once you have the node application installed, you can view the respective ledger contents of that ecosystem. So if I can take you back to the, um, to let's say Ethereum. So let's say I have some money on Ethereum, right? And I want to check out, um, I want to check out my amount of money that I have there on Ethereum, right? My the information about my money and my balances on Ethereum are kept on the shared ledger, right? It is a distributed ledger. What does that mean? It means that um, each machine, each machine that is that is uh, managing uh, that 
uh, blockchain. Remember, the blockchain is managed by a number of machines, not just one machine. So you have a network of machines, each sharing a copy of that same ledger. So if I go on the on the blockchain, right, I want to check out my balance of Ethereum, right? I hook up. So when I hook up, I'll get access to the ledger and I'll be able to check out my transactions on the ledger. So let's say if I want to receive money, I want to send money, yeah, the ledger will record all that, right? So that is basically, you know, the the, the meat itself of the um of the of the blockchain. So um, if let's say we are we have got a voting system, right? The ledger will be the one that will be making um it will be making those uh, it will be recording those transactions, right? So the ledger itself that is where the cryptographic um, magic takes place, right? So um, let's just look a bit at how the cryptography works, okay? I, I hope you are following me. I hope you are still here. Please give me a thumbs up if you are still here. And uh, please record your questions uh, so that we can, um, I can check out uh, if you need any help, all right? Fantastic. I love that. I love that. Um, let's look at, um, let's look at, just a small description of what cryptography is. And you know, cryptography, it's not only on the blockchain that cryptography has been employed. Cryptography is one of the, one of the methods that we are, you know, that has been applied in computers to be able to safeguard information. You know, it is like, we don't even pay attention to it, really. <laughs> we don't even pay attention to it, really. Even your you connecting to the browsers, you know, you getting into AirMeet, right? There was some bit of uh, cryptography happening, you know, information being accepted by you, being accepted by the server from uh, AirMeet. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Let's just look at the technique of cryptography. Cryptography is the technique used to protect uh privacy of a message by transforming it into a form that cannot be understood that can only be understood by the intended recipient everyone else will see it as only an intelligible um sequence of random characters the this message manipulation is enabled by a pair of two keys a public key and a private key those are two important things to note here. You share your public key with your friend who uses it to transform his message to you in an intelligible sequence of random characters. You then use your private key to put it back into its original form. So you can imagine, okay, let's say, you know, there is uh, a message that is traveling between you and the person that is paying you using the banks, right? So anyone is able to anticipate, you know, to to, to I mean, to intercept your message on its way and able to read it, right? And get the information of it and, you know, um, maybe divert the money to themselves using the information and other skills they know. So in order to protect such kind of message traveling from the bank, you and the person that you're transacting with, you know, cryptography is implemented so that whoever intercepts the message in between as it travels, all they are able to check out is just a random sequence of gibberish, right? But when that gibberish gets to you, since you've got a private key and since you had, you know, the, 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 the other person offers their public key to do this, right? You are able to unpack that message and get the contents of it. So you see that uh, um, cryptography is applied on different levels, right? It's applied on different levels. It's in your instant messaging, in your WhatsApps, and yeah, quite a lot. Let's go further. Let's go further. This, uh, the special mathematical properties of these two crypto keys are widely used to provide secrecy and integrity. Two crypto keys play the role of digital signatures and are commonly used in 
um, blockchain to enable both authentic authentic authentication and anonymity of transactions. Blockchain, um, a blockchain uses cryptography to create, uh, you know, uh, blocks in a chain, in a growingly, sorry, it, uh, a blockchain uses um, cryptography uh, to create the growing list of uh, um, uh, blocks, uh, you know, um, uh, a, a list of uh, products. I mean, um, sorry, a, a list of um, uh, um, records. So uh, each block is um, locked by a cryptographic hash or a string of characters that uniquely identifies a set of data to the previous block. The transaction records of a chain of blocks are stored in a data structure called a Merkle tree. This allows for fast retrieval of past records. To be a party in a blockchain-based transaction, each user needs to create a pair of keys, a public key and a private key. This design makes it difficult to alter transactions transaction data stored on a blockchain. So in a nutshell, that is what cryptography does on the blockchain, right? So because of that, you know, and because there is a private key and there is a public key, which means you and I, we do not need to actually give our names on, on the block, right? There is, you are provided, you know, privacy, anonymity in any transaction. All that a person is going to be able to see is a, a string of numbers that is allocated to a certain account. So that is the way uh, most of the open distributed ledgers are working. That's the way um, um, Ethereum, um, uh, what you call it, Bitcoin are working. You are able to go and view. You can connect anybody and one thing is that it is permissionless, isn't it? So you can connect to, let's say, Ethereum, and you, you, if you go to the Block Explorer, you'll be able to check out what kind of transactions are taking place, right? And you will be able to check out who is receiving what money, what money is going to what, uh, what, uh, uh, what key. But what you won't be able to see is uh, what kind of... Uh, what is the uh, what is the, uh, the, the the name of that person? Fantastic. Uh, so that is that about um, the block and cryptographic part of the block. It is in essence that same cryptographic part of the block. You see, so when those two keys, one giving a digital stamp, isn't it? I mean, giving a digital signature, isn't it? That dig digital signature in itself on any of one of those uh, information. So, uh, you, you know, like let's say you and I, uh, let's say me and Lorraine, we, we, we are trading, isn't it, right? Uh, 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 Lorraine is selling shares. I buy a shirt from Lorraine using Bitcoin, right? Um, that transaction will uh, will be recorded in one of the blocks right so it will have a digital stamp it will have its own uh digi digital signature and that digital signature appends and it authenticates that transaction as being a transaction that i made right so you can imagine uh each set of information is stored like that each set of information is stored like that so from one set of information to the other set of information right you've got two links that are linking right you've got two links that are linking um those th those two uh, uh sets of information so um that is the way the string of the block keeps on keeps on growing all right yes. um larry yes um i just mm -hmm. wanted us to just at this moment um just so that the the use of blockchain and what it really is can just come a bit more alive to us who aren't necessarily yes like deep in what exactly blockchain does and its uses i thought that i could just mm -hmm. invite elaine up and then for just the last 10 minutes um 
you just mm-hmm. have a conversation with Elaine on exactly, you know, the real life use cases of blockchain and sort of just um, mm-hmm. the layman um, like explanation of essentially what blockchain is. So I'm going to invite Elaine up on stage now and then you can just discuss there from your perspectives just in terms of real life use cases of blockchain and as a layman, what is it really? Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm here again. Hi, Larry. Hi, Lorraine. Yeah, talking Hi, about Elaine. blockchain sounds exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all about putting chains together. I always think of blockchain as you've got one ledger, you've got a ledger, and one page of the ledger is here. Um, you fill up that page of the ledger with um, with records or transactions. As soon as you finish filling up that page, you um, start to fill up the first one is there. This is what you call the the, the native um, um, block. And then after you finish filling that, you start to fill up another block. You fill up the second block with records or transactions. Um, as soon as you're done with that, you, you um, lock the two blocks. And once you lock the two blocks, as Larry has been explaining, you lock them using cryptography which means they are encrypted. You cannot separate those two blocks once they are locked. And why is it so important that we use this for blockchain? It means that once the transactions or the records you have in this block here, which is locked, and the transactions and the records you have in that block uh, cannot be um, touched. They cannot be changed. They cannot be amended. Nobody can touch them. They They are called immutable. Once they are locked, they are locked. Nobody can go in and make any change. Nobody can go and change how the amount you paid, nothing. If it's a record, nobody can change the record. The record is there. It becomes a permanent immutable record. And once it's locked, it's locked. You cannot change the lock. Now, look at this. I've only got two hands. So I can only use the two hands to show you how we can lock two chains. But then you can lock a third chain, a fourth chain, a fifth chain, a sixth chain, And that's it, you have a whole chain of blocks that are locked together, filled with transactions or records. And guess what? What is even more interesting is that once you have locked all these chains, you cannot break them apart. So if you have a chain of 100 blocks, that is a a fixed chain of 100 blocks. If anybody tries to tamper with the 50th block, for them to be able to do that, they will have to break all the chains, imagine that. And a lot of the blockchain protocols we have, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, that has Larry has been explaining to you, they are filled with thousands and thousands of blocks. So imagine that, you know, you have um, a situation where um, you have your title deeds, your land title deeds um, held in a blockchain. You know for sure that your ownership of your, your land cannot be changed. Nobody can claim ownership of something that belongs to you because it is it has become an immutable, unchangeable record in the blockchain. And this is why blockchain yeah. is so so important for us. You know, the integrity of the system itself is the, the integrity is by default the integrity of the system itself. No one can change the information that you have locked in the chain. That is how blockchain works. I just have a question. All right. um, yes. so if you could give me just three real life examples, aside from, you know, banking and just as Elaine shared the like property title deeds, etc. what real life use cases do we see blockchain being used? All right. Um, Let's say you 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 want to um, to do lending, right? I, I want to lend somebody money, right? And I I do not necessarily need to to have a third party involved in this, right? I can um I, I can connect two of us, right? And I should be able to um to to send you money. Let me let me think about something else. Okay. There's something that is happening which is so beautiful about lending right now that blockchain has made life easier. 
Right. So since there is no third party that is needed, right? We are able to use one system all of us and we are able to, um, um, let's say, um, the people who cannot afford any form of um, uh, uh, bank related requirements for, for getting a loan, right? So I want a small loan. I do not want a bank related loan. You know, I cannot qualify for that. We can create a system on a blockchain, right? Where we get people who are willing to invest into loans and people who want to get loans, right? And we can have a system of having an identity that can work for all of us. One, being able to maintain that a person is able to pay back a loan and also having an opportunity for all of these people. One who has got some bit of money he wants to invest, he can use our system. He can use the same blockchain system. One who wants to lend money to capitalize his, his business, he can use that. You know, blockchain can do that for you. So um, let's say, you know, um, the, the issue with, um, uh, with other money systems, like currently, right, um, I want to do business with people in, in oh, okay, I want to send money, right? I want to send money uh, to my relatives who are living in another country because I've gone in another country to work, isn't it? Remittances. It is able to provide us that, right? So if I have a program that runs on the blockchain, isn't it? Even itself the way it is. Um, let's say um, we are, I, I have a Moncelo, right? Let, let me take example, a Moncelo. Celo is able to create um, blockchain applications for the phone, isn't it? Celo will provide me an opportunity to be able to send money using Celo onto your phone number without having to go through any other company in between, right? So the moment I get the money, I, I get the message from Celo, from, 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 from uh, my sender, isn't it, my relative? I get the money, I check out, it, it shows me, well, um, my uncle in America sent me $200, isn't it? Then it will ask me to set up my, the application, then I can receive that money. So blockchain is able to do such kind of things, right? So um, let's say- hey, can, in, I, uh, can I add something as well? So basically another thing blockchain enables you to do is hmm. uh, what we call peer-to-peer -peer transactions, which means that peer-to-peer -peer mean me to you. So exactly. Um, right now, if I send you money from my bank account to your bank account, the money has to go through the, my bank account's uh, processes, my bank's processes and systems, and then to your bank's processes and systems. And what happens when that happens is that the banks start to charge us fees. So before the money goes from my bank account to your bank account, the bank would have, would have taken its, its own fees. And then that's a pro that, that process can take some time as well. I know that now a lot of these processes are almost real time. But consider this. If we were to send uh, money which was uh, more related to uh, blockchain, I'm talking about cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are all based on the blockchain technology. I can send money to you. It doesn't have to go through a bank account. It's just a direct, a direct transaction, me to you, which is what we call peer-to-peer. -peer. So, and when we do that, there are no banks involved. There's no centralized um, body. There's no central control. It's just from me to you. So that's another way, uh, that's another thing, um, another use case of blockchain. I mean, I talked about land title deeds. Again, you know, in Africa, one of the biggest challenges we had with land title is um, disputes. You know, once somebody has a, a plot of land and all of a yes. sudden, every so many people start showing up with their own title deeds to the same, mm -hmm. same plot. Now, what blockchain does is that if our land registries would put the land title deeds on a blockchain, what would happen is that um, each title deed would authenticate the true ownership of the plot of land. So once that uh, title deed has been verified, authenticated, and it's been put on a blockchain, it's locked. It cannot be amended, it cannot be changed, it's immutable. So nobody can then come to you and say, oh, I own this land, because the authentication of the ownership of that plot of land is on blockchain. And that's another, another use case. 
Um, the other thing I also want to say is, you know, in Africa, again, another thing we do a lot is we buy um, car spare parts. You know, you go and buy a dodgy car spare parts, you know, and sometimes you can't even trace the origin of the spare part and you, you're, pay, you're paying money for it. We, if we were to have a system where, you know, car spare parts, the, the what you call the providence, pro provenance of the spare parts was on a blockchain, you'd be able to um, maybe scan a barcode on that uh, car spare part, and it will be able to show you that this is a mini, this is an authentic, original mini spare part or Mercedes Benz spare part, and it's not some kind of dodgy spare part which you don't know where it came from. So, so these are some of the use cases for a blockchain. The other thing would also be um, agricultural produce. You know, if we had, let's say, mangoes which came from a particular farm somewhere in Botswana. Now, I don't know if you have a lot of mangoes in Botswana. I'm just using Botswana as an example. Um, and they had a barcode um, because uh, the whole uh, process of the uh, growing the mangoes, um, taking the mangoes from the tree, to the point where they are in on the supermarket shelf, you scan the barcode, it should be able to tell you everything about this particular mango because it can tell you which farm it came from and it may even be able to tell you when the seeds were planted up until the point where you actually buy the mango. So these are some of the, 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 the um, benefits that we get from starting to apply blockchain to our, um, our normal lives. I also just wanted um, to ask, what is then the future of a blockchain and where it will be used? So just one, um, just quickly answer that for me, Elaine, and then we are going to be getting ready to welcome back, uh, rather not welcome back, but rather welcome Claire onto the stage. So what is the future of the use of a blockchain? Um yeah, thanks, Lorraine. I think I'll just spend a minute to, you know, say that, and then I'll just let Larry as well um, give his own idea of what he sees, how he sees the future. I see the future of blockchain, I mean, more so in cryptocurrencies than in any other use case. I mean, yes, the other use cases um, are there, but I, for Africa, you see a lot of young people trading cryptocurrencies. They have access to Binance accounts, and they're trading cryptocurrencies. You know, it's so important. Uh, cryptocurrencies are, are a very important part of our lives, particularly because of the peer-to-peer -peer, um, transactions, the peer-to-peer -peer usability of um, cryptocurrencies. The other thing is that we want to see our African central banks start to engage in developing central bank digital currencies, which should pretty much have uh, a, a certain level of cri cryptography as well. Now, for the purpose of stability, because I'm sure a lot of you have heard that Bitcoin is volatile and most cryptocurrencies are quite volatile, actually. So what we need is we need our central banks to start to engage, to think about coming up with um, a, a, a Zimbabwe a currency, a digital currency, you know, a stable coin. When I say stable coin, the stable coin is a more a less volatile, you know, coin or almost not volatile at all. That's why it's called stable. It's a type of um, cryptocurrency which is pegged to um, an actual currency, something like the US dollar, and it makes it more stable. So we want to see our central banks engaging in this so that, you know, if they don't want us to continue to transact using other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and BNB, and others, and they want us to start to use the central bank digital currencies, then they need to come up with their own so that we can start to transact using those central bank digital currencies. But the longer the central banks delay in coming up with cryptocurrencies that we can use amongst ourselves in Africa, the more we are going to be, the, the uptake of other cryptocurrencies is going to be higher and probably exceed what it should be when the central bank digital currencies are eventually issued. Yeah, definitely. And I see in the chat um, there, Crystal was also just agreeing with you there on what you're saying regarding the, the central banks. Um, Larry, what is the future that you see for uh, blockchain? <clears throat> Currently, the future is actually happening. The future is actually happening. Um, this year, starting from last year, has been record breaking. I mean, 
the the, the speed at which um, uh, mass adoption is happening is is ridiculous. The future of blockchain. Well, I can pick out an application. Let's say um, cryptocurrency. We are seeing cryptocurrency moving into into the um, gold standard um, part of uh, investment. Right now, um, it's huge. I mean, uh, people are um, moving investment there. You know, uh, as you know, economies have suffered. You know, over this um, pandemic, so they are finding a safe haven in 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 cryptocurrency as you know as you know as a hedge investment so uh, we are seeing it moving into that direction in fact we are also seeing a situation where you know regulation is, is just a matter of time you know there's great impotence you know blockchain i mean um, bitcoin is about to hit a trillion right it hit a trillion it's actually right now about 900 and all that so as it reaches a trillion we, we should be seeing many more players get in i mean it's going mainstream it has actually done you know it's on this those steps of going mainstream yeah and um uh what else can i say um uh we we are seeing um uh payments become you know majorly part of our lives as we go forward so those are some of the things that are actually happening and things that are actually in the near future that are going to be yeah big you know and the other thing is uh nfts nfts have come home you know they have come to roost so we are going to see a lot much more happening in that direction yeah yeah and Thank also you so much, the Harry. major the major between um ai and blockchain right that yeah. uh, is going to make some much more sense yeah yeah. Um, thank you so much, Larry, for taking us briefly through what, you know, blockchain mm -hmm. is and how it's used in our day to day lives, as well as Elaine for um, coming on so that we can just get another um, perspective on essentially blockchain, what it is, what we're doing and where we're going with it. Thank you both. Thank you.